What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. As you know, uh, I'm in San Diego at Art of Play, and we're looking at the top five favorite Dan and Dave decks. These are the top five decks that are produced by uh, Dan and Dave and or distributed by Dan and Dave. One of them is uh, sort of distributed, not produced by them, and the rest are all produced by them. So let's start with uh, number five. Number five is uh, these cards here. These are Stripe playing cards, and these are produced by Dealer's Grip, which uh, two Danish kids crazy cardists, some of the best in the world, produce these. And I thought, this deck is really cool. I didn't get a chance to get my hands on them, so I'm really excited to open this now. I've never even opened a pack of these, but I love them and I've always wanted to try them out. There you go, there's a tuck case. These kind of look like an old uh, cigarette pack. Minimal font, nice little tuck case design. And I love the design, it's got like this optical illusion here, which I guess makes the cardistry look a lot better at the end of the day. It makes it look like something else, something extra is going on, which I think uh, is what they were going for. So let's pop this seal. First of all, we're getting two ad cards. These are the ad cards here. And over, oh actually those are the Jokers. I think these are the Jokers. Thank you for shuffling this deck of Stripe playing cards. That's a pretty cool note. As you know, these decks were meant for card shuffling. Ace of Spades looks like this. Love that little circle right there. And then all the other cards are pretty much standard. Even the aces, everything is standard, which I love. You know, when especially cards that you're going to use every day. I think casual decks that you have on you that have a little bit of a crazier, zanier design are cool and I use them a lot. But these type of decks are definitely the decks that are gonna be sitting on my desk. I'm gonna grab before I leave the house and then I'm gonna perform with maybe even. So I really like these. They're crushed as well. They feel great, right out of the box. And uh, I look forward to playing more with these, so expect expect some videos with some Stripe playing cards. Let's look at number four. All right, next up we're gonna look at these. Smoke and Mirror Red Edition, check these out. Uh, I became a fan of these. This was in MagicCon, I think 2014, where I bought like a brick of these off Dan and Dave when they had a little uh, they had their little kiosk there and they were selling their cards. I picked up a brick of these babies because they feel amazing, they look great, they look classy, they have that classy Dan and Dave design, which matching jokers here, the two sets of jokers. Uh, same with these over here, classic smoke and mirror jokers, which are really cool. Smoke and mirror ace, and of course, everything else pretty much standard. A uh, couple little adjustments on the court cards, but everything else is pretty much standard. Here's the back design. I absolutely love these cards because the red is so vibrant. It looks like, it's almost like a scarlet red, but it's it's very vibrant, just looks good. And the design is nice and clean. Oh, by the way, I told you guys I would ask them this. Hey guys. Dan, Dave, yeah. I got a question. No, you're not in trouble, you're good. But I had a question for you, come join me. Yeah. It just so happens that some of these decks, especially the private reserve ones, had a line on one of the sides. Was that intentional? Honestly, it was a mistake. Yeah? And then we kept it. I think we first made that mistake on the, the V4s. Actually, the V4s. It was the first, the first minimal of the uh, Smoke and Mirror right. series. So these ones don't have it. No, they do. These ones do? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I got my story wrong. It was a mistake, and then we corrected it. Oh, you did for, correct it. For the reprints, right. uh, we brought it back. Oh, you brought it back for the reprint. Yeah. Interesting, because it, it does give you like a one-way design. See, that's, so I, I, I reviewed the uh, private reserves recently, and I talked about uh, the design, and I was gonna ask you guys if you if you just kept that, if you just rolled with it, and I think it was right. I think that's what I said, so. Yeah. Very cool, thanks for that. Yeah. All right, man, thanks. All right, now get out of here. So you'll either get the version with the line or without the line, these do not have it. But that line is very faint. If you do see it, it'll offer you a one-way design you can do magic tricks with. Let's look at number three. Number three is Odd Bods. Odd Bods, Odd Bods? Odd Bods. I love saying Odd Bods, check these out. How photogenic is that tuck case? That's an amazing tuck case, super nice, super chill. Look at the back, how weird is that? I love it. Here's what I love about the Odd Bods. First of all, tuck case design is on point. Let's have a look at that before we look at the cards. All right, you got a little bit of an embossing, some foil going on. I like this tuck flap as well hat there on the inside. These, in my opinion, were like one of the decks that just kind of like flew under the radar for a lot of people. Um, for what reason, I don't know. Maybe because there was a lot of cards being produced when these were put out. But I didn't see too many people put these up and I just thought it was such a shame because the design on these 
is incredible. The back design and the faces, here's what I love about this. The back design looks like a standard back design, something you would find on most bicycle playing cards or mandolins and that type of thing. However, the faces offer something completely different, new, fun, interactive. The faces are all individually done and they're just crazy little designs on every single one of them. So whether you want to perform with these, like, I mean, look at that, that's magical in itself. So you can perform with these or you can just have these laying around on a table. Either way, oh, that one's awesome, look at that. Almost like the uh, this one's trying to run away or something. I love how they're designed. I love that they're just off the cuff, sort of not taken too serious, which is fun. So these are fun for like poker night, game night, or even just to have on you if you're a performing magician. I would definitely perform with these just because the fact that they look whimsical and magical is cool to me. And you know, if you're afraid of the spectator saying, well, those cards look too magical, well, just give them the deck and you know, have them shuffle or something. But I think they're great. And they also have this cool color uh, you probably can't see here because of my color correction, but this isn't white. This is sort of like an off-white, like almost like an eggshell color, which I really like. Let's take a look at number two. Number two, normally this would be my number one, as you know. The, these are some of my favorite cards in the world. These are the, sorry, the Red Wheels uh, playing cards by DKNG. They come in blue, they come in red. Uh, I have reviewed these already, so I won't, I'll, I'll give you the decency of not sitting you through another Red Wheels review because I can't rave enough about these cards. But if you wanna check out the review, I did a top five uh, review video. You can check it out there. I open these up and I, you know, sort of look at the cards and show you what they're about. But you'll see these pop up in a lot of my photos and Instagram videos and stuff. So these are like modern standards. That's how I call them. They're like standard, but modern standard. But today, today we have a new number one. Today, number one, we're looking at this fabulous deck, which I've never received and completely went over my head. These are the new Private Reserves by Dan and Dave. Look at that wax seal. I talk about this a lot, guys. If you're gonna go private reserve and go exclusive release, you gotta go one ahead, you gotta go overboard, and these guys always do, they never disappoint. Look at that beautiful seal. Let's get in close on that, the detail on that. And here, what's really cool is that you have the number of the deck, right? So a limited edition, here's the number of that deck. Now what's even more cool, and I'm gonna try to open this seal without damaging it. There we go. That's a really neat seal, by the way, this long seal and the wax seal. Really cool. A few things I like about this deck, first and foremost, and you guys probably already know this, gold foil on the back. Wow. That's just amazing. The way that looks spread out or in your hands for a video or anything, that contrast between the dark sort of brown tone and, or black, is that brown or black? I think it's brown. I think the gold maybe makes it look brown. It's just, it's just so nice. So these are uh, standard, but with a twist. So you got like metallic ink on the court cards. Uh, the ace is really cool. And here's something really cool about the ace. Uh, Dan and or Dave actually initialed and dated every ace in the private reserves. So you know that what you're getting is basically an autograph in this deck. So you're not only getting a collector's item, but you're getting something that they've hand packed and hand sign themselves and dated. So this is a really good memorabilia piece. And if anything needs to be private reserves, these cards need to be. I mean, they're gold, they're signed, they're numbered, they're sealed. I think uh, I think the only thing they haven't included in this private reserve was like a lock of their personal hair. Uh, I hope they're not listening and probably giving them ideas for the next release, but uh, that's pretty cool. I do enjoy this deck a lot. You're gonna see this a lot in my videos and stuff. As long as, as long as this deck doesn't wear out, I'll keep using it. So that was my number one. Now for a surprise, we, we were looking at the top five cards, but since we're at Art of Play, and this whole place isn't just about playing cards, it's also about puzzles and games. They're huge on puzzles and games, as you've seen in the last video. And one puzzle stuck out in particular to me, and I didn't show it to you in the last video, but it's this puzzle here. This is a Japanese puzzle, as are most of these puzzles that we've seen. The one thing I found really interesting is that all these puzzles have like a certain way to like open them, especially the storage boxes. And those ways usually have to do with the design itself, like the dice or, you know, that type of thing. This particular one, is super interesting and they gave it to me they're like go ahead and open it and i couldn't figure it out for the life of me and when they showed me the method i was blown away and this is a great piece to have on your table 
and uh, you know give to people and just share with them a little bit of a secret. So it's like you're almost sharing a magic trick with them with these puzzles, which I like, but you don't have to feel bad about it. I think the explanation is just as incredible as like the effect. Dan! When it comes to lore of uh, of puzzles, my knowledge is quite limited, but Dan over here is a bit of an expert, so. I don't know about that. What are these called? Um, that's a cast puzzle from a company in Japan mm -hmm. called Hanayama. Hanayama, and this is a cast puzzle? Yep. And, it and has... by that, it's, it's made from metal, basically. Oh, I see. So a cast puzzle that's been cast molded. Yeah. All right. Um, north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. Already, you're getting a clue of... It is a clue. This is one of their most difficult puzzles, believe it or not. Really? Although once you know the secret, it's the easiest puzzle. <laughs> right. So it's so it's well hidden yeah. and it's hidden in plain sight. Now, if you guys were to take this at home and try to open it yourself or like you there's no way you could see how to open the puzzle. You hear some rattling in here. There's some there's something going on which on the might inside. Also be a clue, yeah. Which might also be a clue. So everything's a clue with these things. I, for the life of me, couldn't open this when the first time I tried. He gave it to me, kind of had, kind of had this little grin on his face, like he does right now, and he's like, no, I "Yeah, was in your same boat. I you, not you're it. never gonna get it." it. Yeah. Um, but this is one of the most, for me, one of the most original ways to open a puzzle, uh, because it uses uh, an incredible physics principle. And uh, I'm gonna let you open it right now. So the way it works is centrifugal force. And you just you suck. spin it. All right, go ahead. And that. Oops, other way. There we go. And that's it. Yep. So before he spun that, he could not open it at all. Yeah, you'll see there's these pins in there which lock it. You see that there? Mm -hmm. When you spin it, move this one out of the way. They move to the side. It and you can put them back together. So those two pins only open when everything's spun around. Yep. So no way anyone would ever figure that out. Like I would be really surprised. I'm sure there's people in Japan dedicated to like solving puzzles in the world. I don't know how this shit. Yeah, this seriously, I have crazy. no idea. Yeah. I become fascinated more and more with these puzzles. Like I was saying, yeah. innately like a magical property about them. No, they're fun. It, it's very much like a magic trick. I mean, we love figuring stuff out as magicians. So it makes sense that we have that passion for puzzles. Puzzles are cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks so much, man. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Remember, those links to these items are below. Check them out. And, uh, oh, yeah, subscribe. Just subscribe to this vid to this thing, okay, that we're doing. We're doing the thing. So you just subscribe to it. And we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Ah!